hi guys welcome back to my channel today i'm just going to be doing a nice bronzy look on this gorgeous girl right here this is my first makeup tutorial on youtube so just bear with me i um, haven't done this for a while or haven't done youtube for a while so just thought i'd jump back in there and get on the bandwagon because it's obviously something i've been wanting to do for so long so uh just starting off with her brows basically i just use the benefit brow pomade i think it is i'm gonna leave the link to all of the products below so this is just like a benefit product that's just like a brow powder and then on the other side of it is a brow gel so i just started off with the brow powder and then i went over with the brow gel just to set that in and then here i'm using a benefit brow pencil in dark brown and just filling in any sparse areas um so yeah it's a three step with the brows the powder the gel and then the pencil uh, now just carving out the eyebrows, I'm just using a concealer. This one is the Too Faced Concealer and I'm just carving out her brows. Just the top, I always start with the top and then the bottom and then I like to just get the concealer and put it obviously all over the lids and make sure that it's nice and seamless and blended. And then I'm just putting the concealer in the middle and just making sure everything is nice and tight <laughs> and clean and crisp. So yeah, just doing that to the other side. And then I just get a translucent powder and I pat that on the eyelid just to set down the concealer and make sure it's a nice base for eyeshadow. And just starting with the first eyeshadow. So I'm using a transition color from a Morphe palette. As I said, I'll leave the link down below with all the products that I used. And this was just a really nice uh, sandy orangey uh, color that I use a transition and yeah just blending it into her crease just setting the first color in and then just adding more and more product just to build it up and obviously just doing the same step on the other side And just here, I'm going in with a darker color and a more dense brush and a Zoeva brush and basically just adding that color into the outer right side of the eye, outer corner of the eyes, just to add that dimension and just buffing that in um, as much as possible and blending it. I feel like I'm a master of blending. I do love blending. I don't like to see any creases or just lines i just blend 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 so that's why you can see um obviously the eyeshadow is further down in the corners of the eye um, it looks a bit silly it looks a bit like clown makeup but you know you have to trust the process so this is me just adding layers onto it and then here i'm using a more uh, purpley brown or chocolate brown i should say um in the very edges of the eye and then bringing that forward or oh, sorry i'm using another brush just to clean that up and blend that upwards just mixing everything together making it look nice and seamless and yeah just basically using that darker color to create the dimension in the outer corners of the eye And then here I just got her to open her eyes just so I could have a better idea of where to layer some more of that eyeshadow and build up some more color. She had a really small eyelid space so when she opened her eyes I was able to see better um, how it was looking. And just going in here with some concealer, I was just using the same Too Faced Born This Way concealer in vanilla and I'm just adding that onto her crease and carving out a cut crease and I sometimes do the method where you put a bit of concealer on the lower lash line and get them to look up. Sometimes I do, sometimes I don't. With her eyelid space, I felt pretty comfortable as to where to put it. So I just started shaping that out um, and going in nice um, soft motions and just really tapping that on. We don't want to do it too heavy or too quickly because you want it to have a really precise line. Um, I really struggled doing cut creases when I first started makeup artistry a couple of years ago, but over the years I've gotten better and better and it comes with practice, but you do really have to just focus on really small motions just to get the right um, lines and just making sure that everything is crisp and perfect. 
Also, this client had obviously really huge eyelash extensions already. So when there's eyelash extensions, it is a, a lot harder to do a cut crease. So I was just going um, in really, really tiny motions, moving my brush back and forth to different in different directions, just making sure that I don't get any concealer on her actual lashes because that's never good. Um, so yeah, you just have to be really careful if the client has eyelash extensions, just making sure that you're getting the brush in the right direction in order for it not to touch the lashes. And I'm just going over that existing line, making sure that it's all perfect, maybe adding a little bit more height to it, um, just seeing where it goes on the lid perfectly and how it looks and just making sure that it's a really neat line and then just patting the concealer on her actual lid space so that we can apply the eyeshadow. So here I am applying um, a nice uh, sort of duo chromatic eyeshadow. Um, it was like a beigey kind of, um, warm golden color and I put that it's a Morphe palette um, and I put that on her lid space where we just put that concealer obviously and I had to spray my brush with fix plus because this particular eyeshadow um, really only goes well on the finger like if you use your finger to put it on um, putting it with a brush on is actually really difficult so I like I like to just sort of put a bit of fix plus on there and just try and get get it on there as best as possible not the best eyeshadow i've ever used but i tried um also i've got a mac pigment there i think this one is in tan it's my favorite pigment ever i use it on like 70 percent of my clients um so just putting that pigment on top of that eyeshadow obviously in that cut crease and just patting that onto the eyelid And then I'm going in the outer edge here using a, another shimmer color, but more of a copper shimmer color just to match that chocolate brown, I guess. Just making more of a darker dimension in the outer corners of the eye. So I'm just adding um, that eyeshadow in there. And then I'm going in with the second or third brush that I use for the chocolate brown. And I'm just um, basically smudging that in with the eyeshadow that I've just put on so just making sure that it's seamless between the shimmer shadow and the matte and then I'm using a more precise brush here just to add more color and making it nice and precise and bringing that into the inner corner of the eye as well on top of the cut crease. And then I went in here with Mary Luminizer by the Balm and just put that in the inner corner of her eyes. And then I go in here just with a black, really sort of dark black eyeshadow from a, the Morphe Times Jaclyn Hill palette. And I'm just putting that on her lash line, uh, basically smudging it out a little bit to make it more of a black smoky sort of liner. Um, and also kind of putting that on top of her lashes because some of the eyeshadow had obviously fallen onto her lashes, which is pretty common for eyelash extensions. So yeah, I'm just smudging that out as best as I could. And then um, after that, I go in with a actual liner or a black, uh, what do you call it? Like wing liner? I don't know, it's a Maybelline stick liner. Oh my God, not a stick liner. I'm so stupid, a liquid liner. <laughs> yeah, so I'm just using the liquid liner to go over where I put that sort of black smoky smudge line. Um, and this kind of gives it some nice depth and it looks really good with the eyelash extensions. Just making sure I'm not getting it fully, fully on her eyelash extensions, but she was fully aware that she'd have to cleanse her eyelash extensions that night. I told her she had to do that. Um, and then I just went over on top of that again with the black eyeshadow um, just really lightly then i went in with makeup wipes and just cleaned up all underneath the eyes and created a sort of um clean crisp line on the side of the eyeshadow and just starting off uh with her skin prep and i'm moisturizing using the neutrogena water gel um moisturizer really amazing really hydrating um, and it's just Neutrogena. It's it's crazy, but I, I drugstore brand. I still find it so good, so hydrating, and I like just to start off with 
this moisturizer and it's good for really all skin types just putting that all over her face and on her neck as well so just making her look up there so that i could blend that down her neck and i completely missed a step usually i like to get a cotton pad and use this rose hip toner and put that on before moisturizer but i forgot so i just sprayed her with that after i moisturized and then i'm going here in here with my mac prep and prime um, and i love to rub this into my fingers and warm it up i've heard that that's how the mac product works you need to warm it up on your fingertips and that's how the primer really engages its ingredients um, and helps stick to the skin so yeah just warm that up on my fingers and then putting that all over her face and just getting that into all the areas that i'll be applying foundation and then using another primer i'm using the professional benefit primer and i'm just putting that in her t-section with a brush so it's getting into all of the pores and so that everything looks nice and flawless when foundation goes on and i always put this underneath the eyes it just creates a really smooth base i don't use eye cream at the moment um, as a moisturizer but i definitely will uh, be purchasing that in my kit soon so if there's any recommendations for eye creams please let me know down below i think the ola Hen henriksen range is really good so i might get an eye cream from them just to put onto my clients but at the moment i do just use professional and a brush um, underneath the eye section so that when concealer goes on it just sort of um, creates a very uh sort of soft effect then just going in with my foundation um and i'm using i think it was mac fix plus today that i use mixed with a little bit of mac face and body um and i put a little bit of nars tahoe as well so i kind of mix my foundations today um so yeah face and body with the nars fix plus obviously two mac products um that i work really well together and a little bit of nars just to create a little bit more um glowiness but really she wanted a full coverage look she had a photo shoot at the beach that day um and it was a photo shoot for wbff i think that's how you pronounce it so you know those fitness competitions so she wanted to look extra glam extra hot uh so yeah she was totally happy to have a full coverage look um and it worked really well this color really matched her skin i think it was nc37 but i'll definitely leave a link down below of what i used and I like to just put my foundation on with this Real Techniques brush, uh, stippling brush. You saw me use that for the moisturizer as well. It's just such a perfect brush to put foundation on. I absolutely love it. I've been doing this technique for about a year now and I will never put foundation on with a beauty blender again. I always have to use a brush. It's so easy just to put that on firstly, it's just to apply it everywhere, um, make sure that it's all blended into the skin and using sort of slow patting but round motions um and then putting that down her neck obviously to make it blended and then um after i obviously use a brush i do go in with a beauty blender so you can see me here a damp beauty blender it has to be damp um and i'm just patting in the rest of the foundation and just making sure that it's nice um and synced into the skin so yeah starting with the brush and then going in with the beauty blender just creates a really sort of soft finish then for concealer, I like to use the Too Faced Born This Way Concealer as I've used previously. Um, and I'm just putting that on the top of her head, on the top of her nose, bridge of her nose, um, on her chin and underneath her eyes. She didn't really have any bags in her eyes. So usually I like to go on with a much lighter concealer first and then put this concealer um, over the top if someone has uh, dark bags underneath their eyes. But she seemed... She had pretty good eyes, so I just used that vanilla one, that vanilla Born This Way. And then here I'm using Tarte Shape Tape in a dark color. I can't remember the name. I think it might be tan. Um, and I'm putting that on her cheeks, on her jawline and her forehead. Then going in with that Real Techniques brush to blend that out on her jawline firstly. And just pulling the brush upwards um, and downwards a little bit, but more upwards. Um, for that blending of that color, that contouring, sort of cream contouring. Um, and we're just going to be doing that on the other side as well. So you can see I'm using the brush in these upwards light motions just because you don't want to drag it in too much because it will lift the foundation off. So just really, really light hand there and doing that on the jawline as well. And then the forehead which adds that dimension of the face. So cream contouring, I don't always do, but in this case, I did that. 
and it looked really good. <laughs> Next step, I'm just getting my beauty blender again, um, and I'm just putting that, or oh, sorry, just blending in that concealer on the forehead, the nose, the chin, um, Cupid's bow, and obviously underneath the eyes, and just patting that very lightly into the skin um, and making sure that it looks all flawless. Then for translucent uh, powder, I'm just using my Laura Mercier translucent powder and just using my Real Techniques, um, I think it's a buffing brush, um, and just putting that underneath the eyes, setting the concealer, obviously. This is a must step. Translucent powder is amazing. So I'm just putting that on top of the concealer, just patting that in. I'm not baking or anything today. I haven't baked a client for a while <laughs> or even on myself. Um, I don't know. I'm just not into that at the moment. I like to just pat it into the skin. Um, and then I'm using my Australis Fresh and Flawless Powder in Deep Natural, I think, or in Medium Tan um, and just patting that all over the face, just making sure that it's all okay for bronzer. Um, just going in today with my Too Faced Chocolate Solil Bronzer, um, and just really lightly putting that on the areas that we cream contoured, uh, just on her jaw, uh, jawline, sorry, her cheeks, not her jawline, her jaw, um, oh my God, her cheeks, not her jawline, and her forehead, and then bringing that down onto her neck as well. Then I go in with a more uh, sort of defined angled contouring bronzer brush and this is using the Hall of Benefit bronzer just to contour in the sections that we use the bronzer but obviously contouring is adding more of a ash cool tone and it just adds a lot more dimension to the areas that we bronzed up. Then adding some blush, and it's just a Chanel blush that I have. Yes, the Chanel, it's bougie as. Um, and you don't need to have a Chanel blush, but I just love this one. I've had this for a while, and I just put that on the apples of her cheeks, just adding some color. I love, love, love the blush step. It's one of my favorite steps. Then spraying her face with the Morphe setting spray before I go in with highlighter. I only recently just started doing this, and I love doing it this way. I always used to put a highlighter first. Don't know why, don't know why I haven't tried this before, but I've tried it and I love it now. So yeah, I'm just putting um, some highlighter on her um, cheeks, on her nose and on her cupid's bow. And this is the Becca Champagne Pop Highlighter. Probably my mostly used highlighter ever. Um, I actually broke the pan on this or I dropped it and it literally crumbled to pieces like a year ago, but I am still using it because that bitch is good. <laughs> And I'm obsessed with Jaclyn Hill. Like, she's the best. Um, then I'm going in with some eyeshadow, um, pretty much using the same colors that we used on the lids, on the creases, whatever, just using the kind of more orangey, sandy color. And then um, in the next step, you'll see me just going in with the sort of darker chocolate brown just there in the outer corner of the eyes. Then going in with a small angled eyeliner brush um, and the Maybelline gel liner and just lining her waterline really lightly, um, not trying to irritate her eyes or anything. Uh, just doing a really small line, nothing too intense. And after that, I go in with a normal flat um, brush and just using black eyeshadow just to sort of blend underneath that a bit so you can see me doing that here i'm just blending in sort of the gel liner to the eyeshadow and this really just creates so much dimension this step is a must so i'm sure everyone knows that already but did that there and then i just put on some mascara on top of her eyelash extensions which is something you shouldn't always do but she requested it um, and it really does lift the eyes and makes everything look so much better and just getting off all of the eyeshadow off of her eyes as well. Uh, for the lips, I went in with a Mecca Max uh, lip liner. Um, there's two combination lip liners that I use pretty much with all clients. 
or well, anyone that wants a nude lip, um, I'll let you know down below what exactly one that was, but one of them is a darker color. So that's the one that I'm using there to outline her lips. And then you can see me going in with more of a lighter, a peachy, nudie color. And I like to just put that all over the lips um, just to give it all of it a um, color. And then I'm going in with a lipstick here, just sort of similar, sort of pinky color and popping that all over her uh, lips and then just cleaning it up, making sure that it's nice and perfect. And then on top of that color, I went in with a darker lipstick just to make the perfect nude um, and for it to match more of the eyes. So yeah, just going over with that darker color and just patting that all on top of the lips. And then the next step uh, was going on with a clear gloss. You can see here I'm putting on that gloss and it's a Napoleon Pertis gloss, which is actually amazing. I've used this for a couple of years. So good. And yeah, that is basically the finished look, guys. I really hope you enjoyed watching this video. Uh, first client tutorial, super excited about it. If you did, please give it a thumbs up and a like and subscribe. Um, I think she looked beautiful for her photo shoot and she wore a gold bathing suit, so it just matched so, so well. Thanks so much, guys, for watching and I will see you in the next video. Bye.